welcome back. It's been a long course. Doing this has been arduous, to say the least. It's been tough. But thanks to your guys' support, I've been able to keep it up, and here we are on Final Project. The goal of this video is to give you some tips and tricks, some things that you might be able to do, what would be the easiest, and what would be the hardest. I'm also going to show you a portion of what I did for my final project here, I'll show you how it works, what I did to accomplish it. I won't be showing you all of the code, and sadly some of it doesn't work anymore because I actually didn't save all of it. So I will show you what does work, and I'll show you the purpose, things like that. That being said, let's get into week 9. First and foremost, I want to point out that for most of you, making a game in Lua Love or iOS Swift are not going to be viable options. You have to learn two entirely new programs, and they're not going to be simple. So for those of you with an extended amount of knowledge and you want to push yourself, that's going to be the better object for you. Beyond that's going to be the JavaScript Android game. That's going to be probably the third most difficult, simply because it uses Java, something you might be familiar with, but you're doing an Android app, something you might not be familiar with. That being said, some of the easiest options are going to be in order, writing a script in C. You could do anything you want with this, something that's already been done. The easiest example of this would be creating some sort of calculator, whether that's a basic calculator, a mortgage calculator, an insurance calculator, something like that. You have all of the know-how to create a basic C script to accomplish what it is you're trying to do. The problem with the command line function is, quite honestly, it's going to be too simple. Even though C was probably the most difficult part of this course, many of you have enough knowledge now that doing a task such as this is going to be remedial at best. However, if this course still is extremely challenging to you, that's going to be the best route to take. Go back to your earlier days looking at calculate functions, looking at your scrabble functions, things like that, and you can create a calculator that's really basic that accomplishes a lot with only a few inputs. Moving on to the next most simple thing in my opinion would probably be a Chrome extension. The reason this one's going to be pretty simple is that there's a lot of tools to help you get these things done. So as much as you are coding, there's going to be a lot of fillers that will code things for you. You could do something like a password manager, or you could do a simple browser timer. Hey, you've been on YouTube this long, you're supposed to be studying, have you dedicated this much time to studying, whatever the case is, to help people manage their time better. So a Chrome extension is going to be actually kind of simple, in my opinion, in that there's a lot of help from Chrome itself and other developers to help you get these done. So that would be second. Third, and what I would probably recommend, and what I did, was a web-based application. This could be something like a blog, it could be a social media network, it could be an e-commerce store. There's a lot of ways you can go with this when you're looking at a web-based application that will be effective. So what I did with mine was a little bit unique. It was specific to me. You want to look at something that's a need and you want to fulfill that need. Mine's very personal to me and I'm going to share it with you. It is an app that I still have in development because sadly my computer processing speed is not quite up to par with VS Code. It's a perfectly fine work computer, college computer, whatever it is. I do need a little bit more power to start running a lot of these codes on there. And once that happens, hopefully I'll be able to release a video and show you guys the actual full app, and maybe it'll even help some of you guys out. That being said, we're going to turn this around, and we're going to get started. All right, so I did a project in Flask that created a web-based application. You can see here I have my app.py. You have to, this was done in VS Code, which meant I had to push and pull from GitHub. That's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for some of you who aren't too familiar with it because the project pretty much does that for you during the course. However, learning to pull and push from GitHub is going to be an essential tool as a coder because there's going to be a lot of tools available and a lot of things you can learn from that. So that's another reason that the web-based application makes sense. I've created a database, I've created users, I've created some logins, some hobbies and things like that. My app.py is not too extensive, only about 116 lines. I have a couple options over here. You'll see I actually made an index file which contains the formatting of my page. You'll see that's quite a bit longer. I did quite a few things here in my index file. The layout file here, which not too bad, only about 69 lines. Obviously I have a .css file and if you take a look you'll see I've customized quite a few things all the way down to some very minor colors you'll see a lot of notes I put in there so 174 lines of CSS getting into what my project did when you run flask it'll run on a local server so it's a website but it's not really what you think it is it's something that you're being hosted locally 
and it kind of shows up on your own computer. Now my project is or was on the topic of mental health. I know there's people that struggle sometimes myself and getting help is easier said than done. So what my web application was designed to do is to allow you to monitor your own behaviors through a series of randomized questions and also performance in things that you do. So you could log into this app and then go about your day and it would collect statistics on you and once a day it would ask you a series of random questions. That way they're never really the same. Things like how long did you sleep? Did you work out today? How was your mood? How many hours of sleep did you get? Things like that. The questions were designed to be randomized in a way that over time could track the user's mood based on the things they did that day. Now this was designed only to talk to the user, so no third party involved. In the long term it was also designed in that the information gathered from this app could be transferable to a licensed professional so that they can see mood monitorization over time. And what the app is designed to do is to make small changes to an individual that they can improve their mood over time. Once enough data is collected it could say something like just as a thought we've noticed on the days you work out you tend to be in a better mood or based on previous information we recommend X hours of sleep because on those days you seem to do well or even counterintuitively say based on information your bad days contain days where you're doing more of this and what that would allow the user to do is to make subtle changes in themselves because at this point they would only be relying on information that they provided and that they input therefore hopefully increasing the users mental attitude and well-being I wanted to make the site a little interactive so when you put in a name here you can put in your name the first thing it says is it's okay if you're not that's kind of a little tagline of mine always has been when you put in your name it returns hello Devin where would you like to go today now some of these don't work anymore but most of them do mainly I think videos doesn't work anymore but the app would be designed in that if you wanted to listen to music you could go to music and you could select by genre or mood so I have two buttons here so let's say you chose by mood and you wanted sad music which type of platform would you like to use Clicking on any of these buttons will then open a suggested playlist for that company. As an example, if you go to Spotify, it's going to bring up sad music, things like that. Okay, I don't want to do that because I'm not logged in. If you wanted to select by genre, you could go to pop, you could go to YouTube, and it will take you to a YouTube channel of pop music. Those were designed in the long run to be part API and part dynamic so that the same playlists don't come up every time to give the user options. Also, it was designed to track the amount of hours a user has listened to that type of music. Under hobbies, if you wanted to go to learn a skill, because sometimes taking your mind off of other things will help improve your mood, I had a little script here to make it look like the website was talking to you. You can say, help me decide, I'm looking for moderate energy, uh, I like being indoors, I strongly enjoy company, uh, how do I feel about getting dirty only if I have to, how do you feel about being in front of a computer? It's fine for a while. So you answer these questions, and I'm going to click randomly, and you'll see it asks you a lot. And what happens is each time it's narrowing those questions down to a recommended answer. So it will choose the best answer based on all of the questions. Now, if you said, I only want to get dirty if I have to, but everything else you said led to gardening, it will still spit out gardening because even though it's something that might be more dirty per se, all of the other questions you answered would be gardening so it would spit that out. If you know what you're looking for you can simply click that and then if you click painting right now it's designed just to take you to YouTube learn to paint and right now it's more static right so you're gonna come across probably the similar things every time however it was designed in the long haul to be more dynamic that way when you click on painting each time will offer you a different result. If you click on need help whether from the home screen or from the need help sign these are real live numbers for the suicide hotline. We have disaster distress, we have lifeline for deaf and hard of hearing. These are actually clickable. This button could have been a little bit better here, but these will call a number from your phone if it's Bluetooth to your computer. 
Otherwise, it will try to make a call in another type of device like Skype or something like that. But if you don't have those, you can have a chat with Lifeline. You can call the actual number that's listed there. So these are very similar to how you actually see them on the website, the Suicide Hotline website. I copied the boxes. Well, I didn't copy them. I remade them in a similar style. I wanted it to look like that on purpose. Now, there's a login and a register function. I don't know if I'm logged in right now, so I'm going to check. I'm not, so let's see if I remember by login and password. Perfect. I made it way too simple. All right. So that being said, you can click on begin tracking. How are you feeling today? Let's do sad. Uh, I have not exercised today. I slept more than five, less than eight. And what happens is over time, you begin to see a chart. Now, I don't know why it didn't show the chart, but for some reason, the chart now shows up here. So what will happen is it will track Monday through Sunday, and this chart will get bigger and bigger, and it will track your mood over time based on some of the activities you did. And when you answer these questions, you can actually go to your profile too, and you can click Get Recommendation. On days when you're sad, you get less sleep. I recommend more sleep. And that's it. And that recommendation will be logged as well so that in the future one of the questions could become have you improved your sleep patterns the questions were designed to be unique in that they weren't redundant and you weren't answering the same thing every time because I personally don't like being asked the same questions over and over as a way of judging how I feel okay so I found the chart on profile again my buttons are a little messed up and the chart could be more refined right now it's kinda like these are monitoring your happy days right and then your sad days and your anxious days and your excellent days the chart as a whole would kind of have a lot of interchangeable things do you want to see your mood do you want to see your activities and your mood on those days but the big thing about this was to input this into a database and then export a recommendation based on the users information that's been input it's designed as a self-help thing that doesn't require a lot of interaction with other people because sometimes that is a difficult thing to seek out however again in long term because it's kind of an, a SQL database that information can actually be transferred to a professional and they can also see similar data in a very simple format to help out the user so that's what we did with my project I'm gonna close that out and leave you guys one more time with this. The hardest things to do are going to be an iOS app using Swift, a game using Lua with Love, and an Android app using Java. The easiest to do in order are going to be the command line program using C, in my opinion a Chrome extension using JavaScript, followed by finally a web-based application using Java, Python, and SQL. That is the one I recommend. You have been taught Java to a good degree. You've been taught Python. You've been taught SQL. Incorporating all of these things may be challenging. It will probably take you a week or two to be honest, but it will make you a better coder and it will also make you draw from things you've already done in this class. Push yourself to do better, but don't settle for what's easy unless you have to. If easy is hard for you, then do that. If hard is easy, then do the hardest thing that you're capable of. Thanks for sticking with me. It's been my pleasure to help you out. One last time for this course, like, comment and definitely subscribe if it's been helpful. I appreciate all of you. This is CS50. That was Final Project. I am Devin, and as always, you are awesome. We'll see you next time.